of Texas has approved the deployment of all 12,000 members of the state's National Guard. President Trump is flying in today to assess the damage and has promised every asset at his command to help local officials. James Cook reports from Houston. As the rain continues to fall, thousands of families are spending the night at a huge shelter in downtown Houston. Hour after hour, more people are surging in, driven from their homes by the rising waters. The city's police chief says he's worried about how many bodies will be found when the floods abate. For now, the focus is on saving lives. 6,000 people are reported to have been rescued by the authorities. Many more have been taken out on a makeshift armada of boats, jet skis, inflatable mattresses and even rubber rings. The Coast Guard says it's taking more than a thousand calls for help every hour. The authorities in Houston are clearly stretched beyond their limits. Sarwat Jabin, a doctor who lives in the suburb of Sugarland, has been stuck in her house for three days. We are starting to get a little panic now. Pretty much we are trapped. A whole neighborhood has been sealed unless there is a steamboat or rescue team come. Hoping it doesn't get to our house, um, doing as much as we can to prepare, but our anxiety level definitely is going up. The flooding has been exacerbated by emergency releases of water from two reservoirs upstream of the city. The decision appears to have been made to sacrifice suburban homes to save central Houston. It is a measure of how desperate things here have become. Ministers have published details of their plans for greater transparency about chief executive's pay and new boardroom representation for workers. Opposition MPs and trade unions have condemned the proposals as too timid and a missed opportunity. Here's our business reporter, Rob Young. Last year, the chief executives of Britain's 100 biggest listed companies were paid an average of £4.5 million. Pounds. That is 129 times the salary of the average British worker. In future, companies on the London Stock Exchange will not only have to publish how much they pay the boss, but also how much their average employee gets. They'll also have to justify the difference between those two figures. Greg Clark, the business secretary, says the government will legislate. If we want Britain to be the best place in the world for people to invest, then we need to make sure that we've got a, a regime, a system, where people who are paid well and highly are paid well on the basis of the performance of their company, not because uh, they're able to get away with high pay for performance. The Institute of Directors says the rule will sharpen board's awareness on pay, but said pay ratios can be a crude measure. Ministers are facing criticism from unions for publishing weaker proposals than suggested last year. But there will be a new register, where significant shareholder rebellions on pay will be recorded. The new rules won't apply to big companies not on the stock market. The city body will separately consider whether they should. Scotland Yard is reinvestigating the murder of a renowned Palestinian cartoonist in Knightsbridge in London 30 years ago. No one has ever been convicted of the shooting of Naji Salim Hussein Al Ali, whose work satirized Israel and several Arab regimes. A Palestinian student arrested during the inquiry was later jailed for possessing weapons and explosives. He claimed to have been working for both the PLO and the Israeli secret service Mossad. Commander Dean Hayden is head of the Yard's counter-terrorist command. People who might, might not have felt confident at the time in relation to coming forward, uh, I'd encourage them now to actually speak to us. Uh, the police in particular do not um, close such inquiries. They always remain active, they're constantly reviewed. Uh, and as a result, if people feel that they can help us, then I'd encourage them to make contact. The British actor...